this is the explanation for the haunted deck. You're gonna need a few things to get started. You're gonna need a regular pack of plank cards, and you're gonna need something called transparent nylon thread. You can get this at your local um, fabric store or arts and crafts store. It's readily available to you. So get yourself some of that. And you're gonna need a sewing needle like this. To get started, take your cards and cut them in half. So you've got 52 cards here, or excuse me, 26 here and 26 here. And as you can see, I've already prepared the bottom half of my, of my pack of playing cards. The top half stays ungaffed. There's nothing uh, altered about those cards. Nothing has changed. So uh, take one of your playing cards, and you're going to want to put a hole in it like this. What you're going to want to do is put a hole in each card, and that thread is going to run through the entire half of the deck, each card with a hole in it. Now this is very easy to do. All you need is that needle. So let's just say this is the uh, bottom half of the pack. What I do is on a bicycle deck, I find the middle of the card, which is right in between the two angels. Take that needle and push it through. Move it back and forth, getting the hole nice and even. And take the needle out, set that aside, and do that with the entire bottom half of the pack, as I've done so here. When you get through the last card, you're going to want to thread the needle and push it through the entire half. You can do this one card at a time, making all the thread come through the deck. When you get to the last card, simply take some scotch tape or any type of tape, it doesn't matter, and tape the thread to the top of that card. This card is never shown, so it really doesn't matter what kind of tape you use. Just make sure you use a thin enough tape to where the deck isn't affected at all. All right? So the thread comes out of that card and is taped. And it runs through the entire bottom half of the pack. This thread runs all the way back to the inside of my left pocket. If you're left-handed, you're going to want to do this in your right pocket. Um, and this depends on whether you carry the cards in your right hand or, um, or left hand. Um, I carry mine in the left hand like this in Mechanic Script. So this thread is going to go to my left pocket. I've attached the thread to the safety pin. And you can see how it connects all the way to the bottom of the pack. You're going to want to push that pocket all the way in. And get something heavy enough like a cell phone. Drop that down in the pocket. Um, a wallet would, will do, or anything heavy enough to keep that pocket from turning inside out. And you're ready to go. Well, not quite. You're going to want to get this stuff out of the way. Assemble the top half of the pack. And drop it on top of the deck. Since this has a hole in it, we don't really need it, but I'll just leave it here on top of the deck. What some people do is they'll put a card on the bottom to cover this, but I find that it's not necessary. You don't want to worry about that. You'll also find that when you put holes in the deck, it'll kind of look uh, extra thick because those holes will have little cards sticking out, little scraps of card, and it'll cause the deck to sort of uh, thicken out and to kind of, you know, not be flush and even with each other. So what you can do is move the cards around and press the center together to get those holes a little flatter. And with time and with pressure, the deck will eventually start to look normal. You can take the other half, put it on top, and squeeze the entire deck together like that. Maybe give it a few uh, waterfall shuffles or uh, dribble shuffles, just getting it to kind of get even. And if the whole deck looks sort of the same, you're home free. And it really doesn't matter because you're going to be holding the deck anyway. So uh, that's that. That is your assembled pack of playing cards. The haunted deck is ready to be performed. That is your assembled pack of playing cards. The haunted deck is ready to be performed. I keep this in my pocket with the thread inside. And when I'm ready to perform, or it's time to perform, 
I simply reach in, pull out the cards, and if you keep the deck um, sort of in front of your leg, you can hide the thread with the hand. And I use the middle and third finger to come in and pinch the thread in between. That's where the thread is running. In between the middle and third finger, and then it runs under my arm. So the deck comes out, and you extend it forward, hiding the thread under the arm, and that thread runs to the pocket. If you're sitting down, it's perfect because that thread will sit right under the arm, and you won't have to worry about flashing at all. If you're standing up, make sure the person in front of you that you're performing for is at a nice angle so you don't flash that thread. Turn a little bit inward if you need to, to cover that thread from view. If you're performing for several people, have them come sit down and uh, you can kind of prop your leg as you're sitting. Prop that thread right over the leg and it covers everything. Now, when you come forward, you can spread the cards out and invite your spectator to select the card. For explanation purposes, I'll just do two cards. You can do up to three cards. I prefer only one. Just one, because my style of performing, you don't need to do it twice or three times. Just do it once, and uh, you'll see how powerful it is. It stands alone by itself. So, invite your spectator to select the card. If you're feeling risky, um, go ahead and let them take two. And uh, just don't spread too far to where they're going to see that ta the tape. And even if they do, you can spread letting the thread kind of go throughout the pack. And that's all connected. This is the bottom half, the gimmick portion. Make sure that all the uh, slack is taken up by extending the deck forward or away from you. Take the first card back and you can riffle the deck this way. When you get past your tape portion, which is the bottom half, you can take the card and push it all the way into the pack. But as you do so, you're going to want to move your hand toward your body. That way, there's more slack and the thread can get taken by that card. So this is what's happening. The thread is running around that card. Okay. It's kind of squared up. You can kind of dribble the, dribble the cards if you want. Now take your next card. Dribble down with the pinky or riffle down with the pinky here. Or just have them stick the card into the bottom half from the side. Once again, bringing the cards toward yourself. Now, if you're just doing one card, you can go in through the front or the side or this side. I prefer from the side. It looks cooler. But with two different cards, you can get two different effects. Because one card's in the front, one card's in the side. So basically, you have the string running up through the deck, around a card, and then around a card, and then back up to the middle of the deck. To make the cards mysteriously come out of the pack, all you have to do is hold the deck in your hand here, this thread is running between the middle and third finger under the arm. Extend the fingers this way and move the hand toward your spectator. You can actually move it toward the spectator and you're doing a combination of two things. You're moving the hand forward and you're also moving your hips back just a little bit. That'll get one card to come out of the pack. Now the second card is ready to come out. So you simply lean back, the deck will go one way, it'll stop, and then you can use your other hand to make it look like the deck is coming back, leaving that card that they selected sticking out. Perfect. Now you're automatically reset. You can take these two cards, put them on top of the pack. While they're looking at the card, if you want, you can ditch the deck. I normally leave it out. Don't make a thing about it. Take, just take the cards back. You can take half of the pack, shuffle it up some more as you walk away. You're going to want to turn your body away from the audience, putting the card back in your pocket. If you worry about flashing that thread, just drop the hand down. That'll cover everything. The thread running to your pocket, and you can walk away. Okay, walk away hiding the thread, and at the opportune time, just go ahead and drop the deck in your pocket. I would definitely save this effect for a key time 
when you're having a family gathering or if you're sitting around with some friends telling ghost stories. You can break this one out and it's very, very cool. I wouldn't do it over and over again. I would limit it, limit it to uh, only two cards at the most. Personally, I prefer one card only, selected, memorized by everyone, put it back in the pack, and then have everyone concentrate on the card using their mind to make that card come out of the pack. You can also tell a story about how uh, there's a ghost that performs with you and he's actually going to move the pack. Or see that the deck is haunted. It's such an old pack of playing cards. Old poker players died gambling with this pack and the spirits have remained in the deck of cards. Whatever you want to say, you can, but it's very fun to do. Um, you'll get some really good reactions with it. So that's the Haunted Deck. Have fun with it, and we'll see you next time.